Hi, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your August 2020 general reading. Matter of fact, I had recorded your video um, last week, and then when I processed it, realized that half of it had no audio. And um, as I've been explaining to you guys, I've been having issues with keeping the camera going, and I can't figure out why that is. I got this fancy computer, and nobody can tell me why I keep shutting off. So just one of those things that's probably... Uh, some type of internal conflict between the program that I'm using and the actual MacBook. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. I am using this, um, the Radiant White deck. Um, and we'll be clarifying with La Vida Sibila. And then we will wrap the reading up with uh, a Golden Nostradamus card, okay? Um, I made a mistake yesterday in my update. I think I told you guys that we have eclipses and that's not correct, but I'm gonna come back to YouTube and um, correct that statement. It does relate to eclipses, but I don't think they're in August, okay? It goes back to 2018, 2017, uh, back when we had uh, eclipses in Leo. So I'm gonna correct that. Um, you guys know I like to give you all the information straight. <clears throat> and I don't know why I was saying that there were eclipses, but I don't think there are. Either way, you're going to find out when I post the next little update thing, or I might even do an open reading for on YouTube, okay? So, with that being said, I've already done some meditation and uh, shuffling on your sign and your glyph, and two cards came out already. And let me see if I can get this where you can see it. I've shortened my reading cloth here uh, in hopes that this is going to help me mm, we'll see okay and uh i'll keep all my cards to the right but for now this is what i'm gonna have to do and so we shall um see what the cards have to say now <clears throat> i don't know what this first card that came down was i haven't turned it over yet uh and so we'll look at that one together so let me get one more reading on here i mean uh shuffle and then we'll get started okay um let's see mercury will i think eventually be traveling through our sign and that is our ruling sign uh, so check whatever points or planets and asteroids that you may have in your sun sign of Virgo besides the sun and uh, see what, because I have Mercury in Virgo. I think I do. Yes, I do. I have Mercury in Virgo, which is conjunct Uranus and conjunct Pluto. Uh. And every time I have somebody read my chart, they go, wow, that's a scary influence. <laughs> so, but what are you going to do? Okay, I can't help when I was born. So, um, just take a look at that because at some point in time, no matter what you have in, in the sign of Virgo, uh, Mercury by transit will be aspecting those things. I think he's going to be, he's in uh, cancer at the moment. And I'm not mistaken, Mercury is the... I think next to the sun, I'm sorry, the moon is the second fastest. See, the, the sun moves every day or every 1.2 days. Then the moon moves every two and a half days. And then I think after that, Mercury is the third fastest planet that makes a move. Mars usually sticks around uh, in a sign for a couple of years, as does um, Saturn. Venus spends a few months. Um... And so that's that. So let's turn over this card and see what it it is the Six of Cups. Okay. Let me divide the cards up and get with the reading. Oh, well. The Devil. Hmm. Well, well, well. Virgo. Let's get the rest of the cards down. Four of Cups. <clears throat> Three of Swords. Hmm. Page of Cups. Wow. T 
Ten of Cups. Isn't that interesting? Nine of Swords. So now I have two nines. And the Queen of Swords. And that uh, is definitely you, Virgo. Um, this is also... Um, an energy. It, it speaks to me of some type of relationship. And I don't know if this is a familial relationship or if it's a romantic relationship. For some of you, it is um, a gift, an offer, the coming together of, maybe this is a return of a past love. Could even be a past life lover. What I find interesting is this past column here. Because the four implies that whatever was being offered to you, you weren't that excited about it. You know, maybe there was something wrong with the offer itself. But yet and still, we have this ten of cups, which implies that Everything is hunky-dory in the sense that everybody has what they want. Um, but then we see this. Now that devil... I always try to give you both the positive and the negative. We know that there are several cards in the tarot deck that freak people out. The tower, the devil, uh, death, the nine of swords, the ten of swords. Uh, these cards freak people out when they see them. And the thing is, is that they're not anything to fear. They're simply kind of alerting you to the dark and the light side of what the cards represent. The devil is, again, not always a negative card. Um, it does represent this idea of commitment. What are you chaining yourself to? Uh, because uh, Saturn rules Capricorn, it's an earth sign. So we're talking about those things that we uh, enjoy doing or those things that we have to do in order to live, those third dimensional things. Eating, drinking, shopping, wearing clothes, ha having a house to live in, a car to drive, those things. But it can also speak to the negative side of things like gambling, drug addictions, obsession, um, and someone trying to wield power and control over you, okay? But the message of the devil card is that you are never bound or chained in such a way that you can never be free, okay? You, you have to think about what it is that's um, being asked of you and are you willing to to commit to those things okay now the two nines um, speak to a house move or a change of address this could even be in a in a work situation But two nines also speak to the idea that uh, one of you needs to spend some time alone. Now, I, I find it interesting that right between the Six of Cups, which is a card of balance, an emotional balance, uh, and the Devil, I find this Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands is an indication of feeling battered, of feeling bruised, of having gone through some kind of um, spat or conflict. Um, Stopping and taking a moment of resting and looking back over where you came from, but still having enough energy to get up and fight should you need to. That's why we're resting on that one wand. There's been some disappointment here. If something has happened or occurred, you know, sometimes I will see this Six of Cups nine of wands and the devil card and the, the what i'm picking up is that it's like a family member or someone close to you who's like becoming a drain on you 
um, emotionally, becoming a drain. And maybe some of you feel as though you have to still commit because for some reason there's there's a kind of a hold over you and I think it's more of um, a, a mindset I don't know maybe you feel it's obligated to somebody uh, for some reason I do get the sense that some of you will be given an opportunity to free yourself from this situation if nothing else, Virgos are practical. I don't think they are, I, you know, I can't really speak for you. I'm, I'm a Virgo son, as you guys know. Um, I'm not a very sentimental person. Uh, and I will cut ties with you or a situation real quick if it doesn't feel right or if I see that it's not what I should be doing. Um, I think, personally for me, th there's two ways that can fall. If it's just some bullshit and I'm not going to deal with it, I'm not sentimental and I don't care about hurting people's feelings. But for this, I have this sense that some of you are waffling about whatever decision it is you need to make because you you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But I think you, you know flat out that this just ain't... Some of you, it's going to be okay. For others of you, you're going to walk away from this situation. Even though I don't necessarily see any movement here. What's under the deck? Look. Isn't that funny? And over this is the, the symbol of Leo, okay? And Leo as a couple um, are very much somewhat like a, a power couple. Leos are generous, they're outgoing, gregarious, they like to be seen, they like to be heard, they want to be known for their good works. Um, but maybe the energy is too much. I, I don't know. You know? Sometimes that two of cups, it's not always about this idea of um, a romantic relationship. This could even be a business partner. It speaks to any relationship in which the balance between the two people on all levels is equal. And they are respected and um, cared for and um, both sides. Right? It's an equal partnership. So, what I want to do is take a look at this, uh, what do you call it here? I don't think this is an offer per se. It is, but it kind of isn't, if, if that makes any sense. I think it's something, an offer is not the right word. I just, what the phrase that keeps coming about is something being put to you. That, that it, it, with an emotional quality to it. And I think for some of you, you are not that excited about it. That's a disappointing aspect of it. But on the other side of that, it is another gift to you. I don't know if that makes any sense. Y'all know my guides are trying to tell me, but one of you needs to spend more time alone. Now, I don't know why that is. And I see some of you making the decision to kind of, because this queen doesn't put up with crap. She just doesn't, okay? She just doesn't. And what's interesting to me is we have the Nine of Swords with the Queen. She's holding the Ace. So this tells me this is the Ten of Swords. And no matter how the situation comes about, what it says to me is that ultimately you're going to know exactly what to do. You're going to come to your truth and you're going to either speak it, stand in it, or you're going to free yourself from this situation. Okay? In effect, that's almost like two tens. And two tens speak to the ending of a relationship or phase in a relationship, okay? But it can also speak to this idea of a, a new financial opportunity coming to you, okay? Even though I don't see no coins here, I've got lots of cups. One, two, three, four, four cups, three swords, and a wand, okay? 
So the first thing I want to do is take a look at these cups in relation to the devil card. So let's see the six of cups. It doesn't tell me anything. Now, I, I, I will tell you this. It says that changes may occur in your life that may not have manifested yet and indicates that the changes are in the very early stages. It may be indicating a new career opportunity or a change of residence being presented to you in the near future. A type of inheritance or special treat may come along unexpectedly. It also says if you are yearning to travel and experience other cultures and lifestyle, it indicates that it is the most appropriate time to do so, so start planning your trip. That could be what that is, but honestly, with the pandemic, nobody's going to be traveling far, <laughs> okay? In fact, some states are not allowing, they're telling people if you're going to come, you're going to have to quarantine for 14 days. If you're going on a vacation, you ain't trying to quarantine for 14 days, right? So you just ain't going to go. That would be the smart thing. Um, it suggests that you will have the opportunity to take on responsibilities and put things in order to allow uh, positive new beginnings. It may be telling of someone who plays at love rather than one who commits themselves seriously. It may be warning of a temporary relationships at times in your life. It tells of old friends and acquaintances being reunited, re-entering your life, reminiscing about the past, ushering in new opp uh, opportunities through these contacts. You may be presented with a new job offer, promotion, or a chance to relocate. It may be informing you of an inheritance or financial windfall coming into your life. It represents new experiences. It also implies of an acceptance and understanding of past issues and experiences. It may be indicating a reunion with long lost family or friends, people appearing, uh, reappearing from your past, or a new friend or acquaintance who will have a great deal in common with you, and the exchange of gifts. So that's what the cups are saying. Me now, let me see what the nine of wands is telling me. Two nines, a house change or uh, a change of address. Remember, that's the first thing I said to you. But the thing is, is that that may come with some kind of conditions that maybe just kind of don't sit right. So you haven't accepted it yet. Let's go back to these cups, the four of cups. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this devil card is kind of perplexing me here. It doesn't tell me anything next to the four of cups. Anxieties and difficulties. A new offer that may be presented to you and you're asked to consider all options carefully before making a final decision. But it also tells you that it is do not turn your back or, on opportunities. But listen to your inner guidance and choose accordingly. Okay. But there's three of swords here. Let's see. Let's see what the three of swords has to say. If anything. Nothing. Nothing. But it also says it's a message to feel positive as bigger and better circumstances are ahead. And you will be given opportunities to start afresh any projects or ideas that have been present. New perspectives will be looked into and positive actions taken. But it can also speak about either yourself or someone very close experiencing second thoughts or a change of heart. Okay. The page doesn't tell me anything except it's some kind of news or message coming out of this on the back side of this. Let me take a look at this uh, Ten of Cups to see what this is telling me. It, it doesn't tell me anything. 
Mm -hmm. A career change for the better, the two tens, and this is kind of the two tens. The nine of swords. Tells me nothing. Let's uh let's go to the Sabilas. And honestly, I'm gonna take a look at this uh first this devil card. There's, 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 there's something about uh, some kind of couple and perhaps children involved. Because they have the depiction of kids here. Childhood, something about childhood. And the two kids there. I'm not quite sure what this is. I'm going to be honest with you. The casa. The doctore. And the Amica. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me take a look at this Four of Cups. It's just something about the Four and the Page and where they have presented themselves. Delta. There's our friendship. Donare servizio. There's our action verb, the act of helping and doing so gladly. And there's the limineo. I don't know if somebody has asked you, maybe you're going through some, some you know, we're all kind of going through you know, some kind of time. And this could be the idea of moving in with somebody or somebody's asking you to move in with him maybe this is strictly for uh financial reasons at the time it's definitely somebody you know um the doctore implies That is somebody with some kind of, with the ability to help in some way. Whether they're providing you advice, whether they're actually doing something for you. I don't know, maybe you have a sick friend, okay, who needs somebody to help take care of them. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is. So that's when I'm going to look at this page of cups here. The Vecchia Senora. And she's not coming across as a person. This is coming across as a situation. The stanza. Huh. And the melancholia. Well, isn't that interesting? The casa is a funny card because it does represent our home. It speaks to security and prosperity and a sanctuary from the outside world. Uh, it also looks like a formal building, so something like a bank. Maybe this is a financial institution. <coughs> we do see this depiction as there's something going on concerning a home, a place of, of dwelling. Let's put it that way. Maybe some of you want to move or change location. But this card can also sometimes represent what goes on behind closed doors, how we feel about something. 
okay? We're keeping it rather locked up or we're keeping it shuttered away, how you feel deep down inside. Here's the doctore. Again, typically he will be a man. <coughs> maybe you invited somebody, maybe somebody's moved in with you. I don't know, you and your partner, okay? And, and it's becoming maybe a bit uncomfortable but if he's not showing up as a person this typically this male figure then this is talking about someone with the ability to help or a situation that is trying to help attending to something trying to <coughs> excuse me fix it okay if this is about being in a relationship with somebody usually when this card shows up it's that you're in a relationship with the person who has something going on with them and what you're trying to do is fix it for them. That drain that I was talking about. Now, this is interesting because the Lamika is also, she's a friend. She won't necessarily sometimes be a close friend, but it could be an acquaintance and could even be a colleague. But basically when she shows up, she represents the idea of somebody who's willing to help you. Where, where they might introduce you to somebody or she may pr provide you some financial assistance in some way or it can sometimes speak about even an event that happens in her home okay this offer being put that we're not to somebody loyal now this is the friendship before we see that being repeated here Somebody that you can count on in times of trouble. But this can also be the idea of the energy of being tied to the way things used to be. Okay, being loyal to an idea, a person, or a thing. The Dona de Servicio is interesting because she's our helper card. Basically, she represents this idea of um, uh, a person who comes in to help tidy things up clean things up, uh, do things for other people, run errands. But as a situational card, this says that um, well, let me get the book because I, I can't quite explain it. I, I can't quite explain how it's playing out in the situational. I see it, I feel it, but I can't quite um the card can sometimes be about climbing the social ladder. It even talks about things taking place outside your hometown. Uh, it speaks about the white flag of peace and truth after quarrels and disagreements. But we see that something happens here. It is a dynamic card that pushes uh, other cards towards the development of new possibilities. It says when represent financially, it says it, it's a positive meaning. Someone who is helpful and kind and really wants to help. This is not somebody that you have a romantic relationship to or is related to. It indicates receiving help and support and the beginning of new conditions. Now in this instance, it becomes neutral as the type of conditions are described by the card that follow it. Financially, it can indicate working from home and employed work, though never self-employment or leadership positions or a helpful colleague it can indicate steady income renewed contracts approved loans or mortgages but it also indicates spending money or any situation in which there is movement or the exchange of money when it represents personal characteristics it represents somebody who is hardworking honest and caring someone who is charming well-bred polite and refined okay But in love, you use it to investigate dynamics between two people because it never represents a lover. It indicates a harmonious relationship where the partners help one another. It's this anti receiving an engagement ring. Trying to see anything else. I don't see anything else. Okay. And then we have the Ace of Wands, the Lemoneo. Now,
it does speak to commitment, a marriage proposal, a wedding, an engagement, or a serious partnership, or the formal union of two people. Okay. But generally, it indicates anything that has been agreed on between two or more people, the formal interaction. As it represents a contract, an agreement, a pact, or a promise, a society, group, an association, or a foundation based upon common interest. In financial matters, it indicates money, material, material possessions, successful financial transactions, and the successful stipulation of contracts or a business idea prosperity in business and in financial matters but it also can represent simply the beginning of something okay it indicates progress on all forms and a situation that will finally uh, yield results but we see that there's some disappointing aspect to this and I'm not quite sure what this is about okay so we're gonna look at this uh, the old lady now basically like I said she will sometimes show up as a person but to me intuitively she's reading a, she's reading like a situation because this card represents life experience good advice tradition conservative views and a harmonious family environment it represents someone who has accepted a situation and has learned to cope with it well it suggests resilience, wisdom, and inner strength. It also represents the end of a phase or waning of some kind of situations that are about to terminate and or decline, or that something or someone who is losing their hold over you. Now again, it speaks to travel, slow structural changes in situations that solve itself over time. Uh, in financial matters, it indicates an established business, a family business, old projects that flourish and wealth accumulated over time, uh, a business or a traditional product made in the old-fashioned way. Sometimes it can show up for like working with older people or antique dealers or the end of a business relationship. In, in love, it indicates someone who's attached to their family, traditional views, and to the love of one's extended family, especially a female relative. It can indicate a deep love, not based on shallow motives or physical appearance, but based on common interest and a true soul connection. It can indicate a lover from a past life or a soulmate. Remember I said that. Now the stanza, and this is the ace of diamonds, so you have one ace, two aces, you have two aces here. And that's the two of cups card. The, uh, what do you call it? The, um, uh, Kaza. So let's take a look at this rune card. It is derived about two people opening up to each other in conversation. It is a card of secrets and classified information and privacy. If this is about a friendship, it is a card that describes two people who know each other very well and can indicate a best friend or someone who knows a secret about you. But generally, it describes a very important meeting of a sensitive nature. Any meeting that you are emotionally invested in a job interview, a consultation, a visit to the doctor's office, or even an affair. The oldest meaning of this card is in connection to your social life, company, and acquaintances and friends. But it is also interpreted as a different kind of room. It can represent an office, a study, a doctor's office, or a meeting with politician, any professional person such as a solicitor, barrister, notary, even an architect. It indicates situations that are rapidly evolving and that will soon bring a different set of events. It foretells of upcoming news developments and possible visitors. If you have been waiting for a response or news or even a package to arrive, this card tells you that it is coming. In love, it foretells of passionate encounters, fulfilling relationships, and love conquests. Also shared secrets and bonding emotionally with another. In a family environment, it indicates strong family ties or family events. In financial matters, 
It indicates patents, trade secrets, espionage, secret formulas uh, of a product, work meetings. It is positive and heralds prosperity and good investments, usually due to inside knowledge or specialist advice. But it also indicates job interviews, office jobs, and self-employment, seen as working from home. Now remember, that card is about working for somebody else. And maybe there's been an offer put to you to come work for somebody else. Here is the Malinconia, the Five of Diamonds. And this is an interesting card to me. Because it indicates a passing disappointment. And that if there's been a black cloud of sadness hanging over, it will eventually dissipate. It can indicate momentary defeat and a lack of success. But these conditions will not affect you in a traumatic or lasting way. It describes a person who was once happy and now something has changed. They live perhaps in a state of guilt, sadness, and nostalgia, pining for what, what they once had. It usually indicates an attachment to the past and or living in the past. Remember I said that. Um, haunting memories, nostalgia, regret, and tears, and a period of dejection that will ultimately pass. Basically, all the cards on the left represent situations from the past. So here it is. How things used to be in some kind of meeting where I don't think you could necessarily... Maybe there was something that you wanted to change or you wanted to stay the same, but it, it just, it can't. It's time has passed now. This card always indicates having lost something or someone dear to you, but not because of death or loss, but because of distance or separation. In love, it can herald pangs of conscience over mistakes made in a relationship and describes deep nostalgia lamenting over the good times in a relationship that is now over. But generally, it indicates a lack of fulfillment and direction. Feelings of loneliness, a period of crisis, sometimes a spiritual crisis, and of a general lack of motivation. Financially, it indicates an unfulfilling job, temporary unemployment, and worry about money. I don't know if you... I have the sense that you, you feel... And so you've let somebody down. But why? I mean, you know, as things change. And maybe it might be just simply the timing of whatever this thing is. Formulate one question for the Golden Nostradamus. Let's see what he can tell us here. Even if this is not a planned move or change of address or relocation, it talks about movement. And sometimes moving from one place to another may not be really in a physical sense. It could be in an emotional sense or mental sense. You're moving out of one space emotionally into another one. You're moving out of one space mentally into another one. Even though there's not a six of swords here, um, it, it there's this... Something is changing. Something has to change because it can no longer stand anymore. It's disappointing. It can even be fearful, you know. But to me, showing that this particular, this Queen of Swords shows up, that has you have your back to all of this, you end up, even with the devil sitting on top, over the top of this row, you're able to clearly see this is about being clear-eyed and objective and sometimes when you have to be clear-eyed and objective there is no room for sentiment there is no room for nostalgia and there is no room to uh, tap dance around feelings right you have to be clear-eyed and objective and be able to see whatever it is you need to see so that you can move or go to wherever it is you're trying to move or go, whether this is uh, literally or metaphorically. I hope that makes sense. All right, one card for the for the Golden Nostradamus. Look, it is the stork. That's really interesting. 
because storks always return home. Uh, they are uh, birds aren't monogamous, but they mate <laughs> they mate for life, um, and, and they always speak about returning home, feathering the nest, right? Um, making it solid so that when they go off, they migrate away. They can always come back so that they can settle down. So it says this. In youth, we feather our own nest, but in old age, we seek only rest. Joy will arrive soon with positive, unexpected news or a new birth yet to be conceived or already on its way. Now, I don't know, you know, if maybe some of you want to have children or maybe you're trying to conceive, maybe you might find yourself pregnant unexpectedly, yeah? Uh, but if that's not the case, conceiving something means giving birth to it. You know, saying whatever it is and going, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. That's your idea. Okay. Um, and once you conceive it and you give birth to it, what do you got to do? You got to nurture it. You got to take care of it. Got that new project. That's your baby. Got that new home. That's your baby, right? And you are responsible for taking care of it because you gave birth to it. You conceived this idea and you did it. So that's what I think that means. I don't, you know, necessarily see anybody stabbing you in the back. I don't see any, you know, tricks up the sleeve or, or you know, things you want to watch out for where somebody may be lying to you or hiding something from you. To me, this energy really feels like the recognition, whether you want to really admit it or not, that something needs to change for you, okay? And that, and the recognition of, of knowing that something needs to change, I think you're a little bit ambivalent about in a way, what other people are going to think or what other people are going to say, but you are the captain of your own ship and your own destiny. And that's the truth. And you need to be clear-eyed and direct and to the point, because look, you're looking into the future. And even this, you're sitting up above the clouds. Do you see that? Clouds always in the tarot represent confusion or murky thoughts. You're up, elevated up above the clouds. You're able to see farther than anybody else who's sitting down below your throne. See, even the trees, you're up above the trees. So this is really about getting your head out of the clouds and taking a look at the direction in which you want to go. This is about forward movement. That's what I have for you, Virgo. I hope that message helped for August. And until next time, Namaste.